From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. I don't know about you, but I can hardly believe that this past year has evaporated. 52 weeks just gone. And so Jack came up with a very, very good program today entitled Review of the Year. We're going to be talking about some of the major things that happened during this year. And number one, of course, is on everybody's mind, World facing worst financial crisis in history. I couldn't believe those last two words. And in 2011, 89 weather-related disasters have been declared. 89. Well, I'm going to be talking about somebody who's in trouble financially. So how about that one, Jack? We're, a lot of people are in trouble well, financially. Well, that was your first point you announced, Drexella. And you know, even the college students now owe $1 trillion. I don't know if they'll ever be able to pay it back. Friends, in 2011, there have been so many, many natural disasters. Of course, we all know about the tornadoes, hurricanes, tsunamis. Remember Joplin, Missouri? That was very dear to my heart because I was born in Missouri. In 2011, 89 disasters have been declared. Just take a look at that. And that was in Joplin, Missouri there. I just want to ask Jack, uh, I've never seen anything like this in my life or reported anything like this. Do you think that it's going to continue, Jack? Will we continue to see some disasters in the world? Rexella, Diane Sawyer, ABC said, this is the worst thing we have ever seen in the history of the United States of America. 89 tragedies. And I think of Joplin, Missouri, and that's Luke 21, verse 26. Men's hearts will fail them for fear, looking after those things which shall come to pass on the earth, for the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and they were. And then in Japan, oh, how these people suffered as this tsunami came in, 100-foot waves, along with an earthquake, along with the radiation leaking from their atomic sites. And that, of course, is Luke 21, 25. Nations will be in distress with perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring. But what shocks me most is that our scientists say it's going to get worse. And I believe that's because the Lord is coming. And we're going to hear the sound come up hither, Revelation 4, 1. And it will sweep through the heavenlies in the twinkling of an eye. And we'll miss the horrendous hour of tribulation. And that's Revelation 3.10. I'll keep you from, out of, ek, the Greek word, the hour of testing which comes upon the whole earth. But things are going to get bad. Just study Revelation chapter 6 to 18, the seven-year period of tribulation after the rapture, just before Christ returns to the earth with his loved ones to rule and reign here forever and forever. Many earthquakes are mentioned in the book of Revelation. In chapter 6, verse 12, he said, I beheld when he'd opened the sixth seal, and there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Carl Sagan, who is not one who promoted the Bible, said there's an hour coming when there could be a tremendous earthquake uh, caused by a meteor hitting the earth and it would cause darkness over all the world for a period of four solid months. In Revelation 16, verse 3, we find that the oceans become poison. This could be from radiation, like what Chernobyl did, uh, the Ukraine atom explosion, and poisoned the waters of that area, and what's just happened in Japan. Well, something happens during the tribulation hour that's the most horrendous thing in history because every living creature in the sea dies. Where is that again? Revelation chapter 16, verse 3. Drastic times are coming. So this is just a preview then, yes. Jack. And worst times are coming, as the scientists said there in that headline. Well, turning now 
to economics worldwide. I wonder, Jack, does the Bible teach that it is going to become the worst in history financially? Excel at everything we're hearing from the commentators of the world, the secular people, constantly saying the worst ever, just like Diane Sawyer said about the weather and now about finances. It certainly is. And I've mentioned this a couple times during the year, but I'm repeating it. We are in trouble financially, not only around the world, but right here in America. Now, how bad does it get? In James chapter 5, verses 1 to 4, it says, Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Why are they crying? Because so great riches has come to naught. They are really bothered because everything is kaput, as we say in the land of Belgium and Germany. And that's verse 4 of James 5. But the weeping and wailing is carried on in Revelation chapter 18. This is the tribulation hour. And verse 10 says, For in one hour is her judgment come. What kind of judgment? Verse 17, For in one hour all her riches are come to naught, to nothing. Verse 19, In one hour is she made desolate. And while men depend on metals, oh, silver and gold, let's get them for trading purposes. Ezekiel 7, 19 says, they shall cast their silver into the streets and their gold shall be confiscated. When? Revelation 16, 1, in the day of the wrath of the Lord toward the end of the tribulation hour. And they're going to go to a new system because of it, the mark. This will replace all of the money. They'll start over again. The one world religion united with the one world government of the Word of God, mentioned in Revelation 12, 3, Revelation 13, 1, and Revelation 17, verses 3, 7, 12, and 16. But the one world religion, ha, ah, is Revelation 13, verses 15 to 18. Power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. He causes all global, rich and poor, to receive a mark in their right hand or forehead that no man, it's global, could buy or sell, save he that the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here's wisdom. Let him that understanding count the number of the beast, the Antichrist. It's the number of a man in his number, 603 score and six. Jack, I'm just amazed as I see the Bible unfolding before our very eyes. Things are happening that God said would happen just prior, whoa, to something good, his return. Now, I never thought in my lifetime I'd see something on television that we saw happen in 2011. The Russians dared to make their voices heard in 2011. The beginning of the end of Putin? Ooh, well, he's standing firm, but we'll see what happens. And I love this one. The future still belongs to America. For now, friends, for now. Now, Jack has often spoken about Russia. You well know about Gog and Magog that he has spoken about. That refers to Russia leading to a final big war. Now, I wonder, Jack, is Putin going to stay in, do you think, or is he going to be defeated? Let me first say, Rexella, that I started preaching on the subject, the coming war with Russia, according to the Bible, in 1950, and I haven't had to change one single word. And it's come to pass exactly like I said it would. And those names in Ezekiel 38, verses 1 and 2, called Gog, Magog, Meshach, Tubal, Rosh, are all cities in Russia right now. Let me quickly say this. Gog is the one who heads it all up, and Putin was firm. I will trade places with Medvedev. This is just a temporary situation. I'll be back. But now there are protests. Could it be because of what he's trying to create? The Shanghai Co-op Organization. We, along with China, will get together and we'll create Eurasia. But the two of us will control all this part of the world. And maybe the Russian people are unhappy with that because they want to be identified with the European Union rather than with the other side. 
and this new world order concerning Iran and China and Russia and all the rest. I don't know, but time will tell. He already has enticed Kazakhstan and Belarus to be a part of this. And now he wants to pull them back again so they can become the most powerful empire in history. And folks, I believe it could happen. And this man is clever. He was one of the leaders of the KGB, the worst spy organization in the world. And I believe he'll get in again and he will probably become the Gog of Magog. But let me say this, the Arab Federation goes along with Russia in the war of the latter years and the latter days, Ezekiel 38, verse 8, 16. And you find Egypt in there and that's the brotherhood just elected who'll push them, Daniel 11, 40. Then also in this war called Armageddon, Revelation 16, 16, we find in Ezekiel 38, verses 5 to 7, that Persia goes along with Raj, Russia. And the Persian Empire originally consisted of Iran and Iraq. And both of them changed their names from Persia to that around 1935. But in the Hebrew, there's Kush and Put. And translated here, it's Ethiopia, Libya, but it's much more than that. It's Yemen. It is the parts of Africa, Sudan. It's Algeria, Morocco, Libya, all of them. It's going to be an Arab Federation united with Russia, but that fails. And that's Ezekiel 39, verses 1, 2, 12, and 13. It takes seven months to bury the dead because of the defeat of Russia and the Arab hordes. The second invasion occurs when China makes the move, Revelation 16, 12, for the greatest war in history, Revelation 9, 14 to 18, Rexella. Our president just said, we do not fear China, but he does. Right. Because he is now signing a contract to place our troops in Australia to be ready for the move of China. It's all here, folks. The prophecies are fulfilled and Jesus could come at any moment because this all happens after the rapture. You know, friends, I want to thank Jack for something. I want to thank him for warning us, warning us about all the events that happened this past year and how it pertains to Bible prophecy and the coming of the Lord is so very, very near. We need to take it very seriously and know that all of this points to the return of our Savior. Are you ready for the return of our Savior? And if you were to know we were coming today, would you say, thank you, Lord, I'm ready. Jack, would you please tell all of us how we can be ready for the return oh, of Christ? Folks, please listen. Don't put off salvation. Prepare to meet your God, Amos 4.12. Now, pray this from your heart, Lord Jesus. I want to be ready. It's closing time. Jesus, you died for me to save me, to cleanse me, and to take me into your presence. Today, I receive that crucified body and the bloodshed for my salvation. Come into my heart, Jesus. In your holy name, I pray this. Amen. Amen. You know, again, I want to thank Jack for warning us Amen. and for that wonderful prayer just now, leading people to Christ. Mm -hmm. If ever we needed the Lord in our lives, we need it now. Not only are there things in our lives we need to be forgiven of, but you can have peace right now in this terribly troubled world. I'm not afraid of tomorrow because I know the one who will take us through, the one who forgave me of my sins when I prayed that prayer, and if you just prayed and asked the Lord to come into your life, would you please write to me? I'd love to send you a wonderful little booklet, First Steps in a New Direction. It will help you as you begin your walk with the Lord to live for Him. So please let me know if you prayed that prayer. By the way, everything you've ever done that's wrong is gone. How wonderful the blood of Christ cleanses from all all sin. And here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive our wonderful offer of the week, A Place Called Heaven by Dr. Robert Jeffries. 
All right. I want you to be sure and listen to Bob right now because I would want you to order this. And uh, here's our announcer, Bob. To order your copy of the book, A Place Called Heaven, with the bonus DVD, Heaven, the Eternal Home for Some. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impe Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impe Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, N9A, 6Y1. Thank you so much, Bob. I appreciate that. Now, please call or write for the wonderful offer of the week, A Place Called Heaven. It's one of the finest books I've ever read on heaven. And of course, it is by Dr. Jeffries. And I have a bonus I'm going to be sending with it when I get your order. And it is Heaven, the Eternal Home for Some. Oh, my friends. I do wish you a blessed, blessed year in the days to come. And I want to remind you of some, something, that life, oh my, my, can be very, very confusing sometimes. What do we need to rely on? Life is fragile. Handle with prayer. Look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we, so very much. Bye-bye.